This video is for DeFi developers who want to know what tokens were swapped when they see an exact input or exact output transaction in the mempool. Because if you want to front run transactions, you first need to know what is happening in the transactions you're looking at. I pulled some pending exact input and exact output transactions for Uniswap's swap router out of the mempool. This is the first one. And the path is supposed to tell us what tokens, pools, and fee tiers are involved in this swap. But in the current format, it's useless. How do we know if this transaction swaps wrapped Ether to wrapped Bitcoin, or Tether to wrapped Ether to Aave, and then back to Tether? Let me show you how to know what tokens are being swapped, and how to convert the path into something that's useful. So you can front run, do analytics, or whatever else you want to use this information for. Let's go. I'm Blockman, and I teach DeFi developers how to use Uniswap with code. If you want to learn how to do swaps and manage liquidity on Uniswap without spending weeks reading through the documentation and the code on GitHub, sign up for my Uniswap v3 masterclass. Link in the description. I've got some exact input transaction hashes here. We'll be pulling these transactions to parse and decode what tokens were swapped. These are not the paths we were talking about themselves, but these reference transactions, which will include the path object when decoded. I want you to be able to start with any transaction and then figure out exactly what tokens were swapped inside of it. Start by importing ethers, which is how we'll read from the blockchain. Import.env because I have my infra URL stored in my .env file. Process.env.variable name is how we pull environment variables from the .env file while keeping them secret. I use this to pass my infra URL to JSON RPC provider here to create a provider, which is the object we use to read from the blockchain. And you'll need to create your own infra account and get your own infra URL. Here I have the ABI for Swap Router 02, the contract these transactions were sent to. Now I create an interface with ethers.utils.interface and pass in the ABI. An interface initialized with a specific ABI allows decoding transactions sent to a contract which matches that ABI. Now the interface itself won't decode the path we looked at earlier, but it will decode the transactions so that we can get that path and then do further work on it. Now to the fun part. In our main function, start by looping over the hashes. And for each one, pass the hash to provider.getTransaction to get the transaction from the blockchain. Parse data from that, and the data object encodes the function called and the argument sent which we need to access. Then pass that data to contract interface .parse transaction. Now from that, we can get the functions and arguments. So parse out the path, first get params out of the args, and then get path out of params, and pass this to our decode path function. This function takes the path from the decoded transaction above. It first creates an array, which we'll use to store decoded input tokens, output tokens, and fees. Then remove the 0x from the beginning of the encoded path. The 0x doesn't tell us anything other than that the string represents a hexadecimal value. Now initialize a variable called idx, index, with a value of 0. We'll use this to keep track of where we are in the hexadecimal string as we iterate over it and parse out token addresses and fees. Also initialize a variable called input token. This will store the input token or multiple input tokens as we iterate over the path. Now we extract the first 40 characters from the path. This is the address of the input token on the first pool. And then increment the index by 40 so we can skip over the data we just parsed out. Now begin a loop that continues until we iterate across the entire path using a while loop. If the index is less than the total length of the path, continue iterating. Extract the next six characters, which is the fee on the first pool. And increment the index by six, so we start from the end of the fee when parsing the next piece of information out. 
Now extract the next 40 characters. This is the output token on the first swap, and also the input token if there is a second swap. Increment the index by 40 for the same reason as before. And now add that data to the decoded path object. Input token, output token, and the fee. And set the output token as the input token so that it's used as the input token if there is a second swap. Now I haven't tested this code on paths with more than two swaps, but I assume it works. Let me know if it doesn't. Then log the path object. Let's give this a run in the terminal and see what it outputs. The first transaction here only contains a single swap, from this token to this token. But the second transaction contains two swaps, from this token to this token, at the 3000 or 0.3% fee, and this token to this token, at the 500 or 0.05% fee. This is very useful to understand and be able to do, otherwise the path in an exact input or exact output transaction means nothing. Leave your questions and comments below, like and subscribe if you're still watching, and I'll see you next time.